My name is Clint Lewing. I'm driving a 1977 MCI Crusader. And uh, yeah, I spent the last three years building this sucker. This video is sponsored by Crisp. If you ever struggle with background noise during online calls or recording video, Crisp is the magic tool that blocks 100% of background noise with the click of a button. Click the link in the description and get 240 minutes of free use per week. And don't worry about noise anymore. And remember to subscribe. Five years ago now, I think, I uh, was actually filming in Baja in Mexico and I decided to rent a Dodge Caravan and cruise through in California and I love that so much I decided you know I'm gonna build my own so I ended up picking up a 1991 uh, Chev G20 spent a good two years building that one out and then that van honestly it went so good I tend to go big or go home I had been looking at this specific bus for a good year and a half the guy needed to sell it more than I needed to buy this specific bus so what started out around just shy of $30,000, ended up around 85 or 8,600 bucks. There's actually a 7,500 kilowatt uh, quiet diesel owning generator in here and an inverter that turns out it's like a $5,000 inverter. So I basically paid what that generator and that inverter is worth and I got the bus for free. Not a carpenter by trade. I mean, I never even took schooling in high school. I've never even seen a YouTube tutorial on really anything that I've done. I wasn't scared to just pick up a tool and try. It was nice when you can live in a house and this is the project, but for the last year, I was living in my project while it was, you know, getting finished. So that's pretty taxing, right? Like you can never escape the work. I would get more and more ideas as I went. So I'd like build off more and more. The details in there went pretty crazy, but again, it's totally worth it. This has been coming on three years, this build. But yeah, now this is home. This is my 1977 MCI Crusader. It's an old charter bus that has 197,000 kilometers on the hubometer. Basically not even broken in. Always thought of doing the schoolie thing. So once I started looking at charter buses and the Prevos, I'm like, as soon as I saw the first one, I'm like, oh damn, I know what I'm gonna do. So school buses went out the window and then I was looking for charter buses. And once I saw the look of this 77, it's like done, that's it. 545 liters of diesel this one got, so it's not too cheap to fill up, but you go a long ways. Two brand new batteries, it's a 24 volt system, so these batteries are brand new. Um, that's obviously how I start and stop. 7,500 kilowatt quiet diesel generator and the inverter there as well. So generator is plumbed into the fuel tank, 545 liters to have this one to charge my battery bank on the other side that you'll see after. Down the road, I'm actually having built basically two drawers. So all I'm gonna do is hit a button here and then the drawers are gonna come out as tracks on here. So one drawer is gonna be for tools and this is gonna be the adventure drawer. So when I hit that button, I'll have the dirt bike come out and one wheel and the jet surf and all that kind of stuff because yeah, I like to go fast on a bunch of different things. So that'll be, that'll be the tickle trunk on the back one. Biggest question that I get all the time is do you need a class one or what do you need? This tag axle, you can actually just lift it up off the ground to get you know an easier turn around. Since this is only a single drive axle, all you need is your Q endorsement, so your air brakes. So this is the Detroit Diesel 8V71. Runs absolutely amazing. Brand new radiators in here, doesn't run hot. You can actually start stop it back here as well. Anybody who's trucking now, that's what they started with. So every truck stop I go to, right, they'll be coming in like, hey, is that an old Detroit? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gets a little bit of attention, that's for sure. I'll show you, well, not the power plant, but what keeps the lights on. And then you get a little bit more of an idea of the perfectionist that I am, that you're never even gonna see this, but it still looks pretty. So this is the propane and the batteries here. So I have 10 13 inch uh, deep cycle batteries and these can be charged with the generator over there or my uh, NOCO Genius Pro. It's a 50 amp charger, so I can be running the AC heater, everything uh, while that's all plugged in. I just charged these now, but before that it was last year, November. So, oh, 10 months. Okay, so long time without having to charge it. So basically the end of the world comes, I don't need to plug into anything or whatever. And then yeah, the propane in there as well. So yeah, for cooking, heat, all that kind of stuff. One of the good pieces of advice that I'll give everyone that wants to live out on the road, you might not need something this big, but 
you need all your tools if something's going wrong. So I mean, yeah, everything from, you know, from engine work to flats, all that kind of stuff. I have everything with me all the time. Yeah, this is kind of a cool feature too. So people ask sometimes too where my spare tire is. And there's my spare tire. I definitely wouldn't be able to change this tire myself. It's a little too heavy for my jack to handle, but I mean, there is your spare. So that's it for the outside. And uh, now I'm excited to show you the actual best part of the bus, which is inside. So after you. What is great is this bus is an automatic, not shifting through gears, that kind of thing, which makes driving a lot more comfortable. And it's actually super comfy to drive this bus. I mean, this seat, you know, when it's aired up, like you're actually on air here as well. So you're just bouncing nice comfy here and you got a hell of a view and you know, the music sound system, it's great. So yeah, it's super comfy to drive this one. This is the whole sound system and everything that I built in. I have uh, two 1500 watt uh, Hertz Malay amps that are powering two Hertz Malay 12 inch subs and eight six and a half inch uh, Malay rounds. So. There's two on each side here, and then we got six up top. Like a uh, wise man, Joey Tribbiani once said, to have a TV as if appearing from nowhere, that's the dream. Well, we got the dream. We got an 8K 55 inch TV hidden behind there. So while we're driving, it's down, but when we're parked like this, hanging out, you got your TV as well. That's run off the 110, so coming off the inverter, as well as the TV, the Xbox, everything like that, and this whole entertainment unit. I wanted to keep everything kind of natural with the wood, right? So even the upholstery that I did, it's it's not real, but you know, it's that fake kind of gator stick in just to give it texture. Everything that's in here is like a wood grain enhancement stain. So there's zero color to it. I always knew just the kind of colors I wanted. Instead of getting stain, I just got wood that looked the color I wanted it to be, right? Actually, the like the armrests here on this side and that side over there, you see the green epoxy? This is actually the center cutouts um, from the back vanity over there. So I just reused that. And uh, actually underneath here as well, like if you just lift the cushion off, like from here to here, it's just a door you open up. So I have all spare blankets, camping stuff. It's all, uh, you know, all storage underneath here. I actually made a Lichtenberg wood burning machine. I went to Salvation Army, spent the whole $10, got a microwave. You just get a transformer out and it's enough to burn the hell out of this wood. So burned it first, got all the charcoal out, and then uh, yeah, went with the two different color blue epoxies. It's a touch that's definitely worth the effort for sure. On next, where uh, Sir always likes hanging out, especially in the winter, I did get the electric fireplace in here. So in the winter here in BC, like this is more than good enough. Like it's hot in here. The only thing that I paid someone to do is come in and spray the roof with uh, the spray insulation. I have silver board, the vapor barrier and the walls R40 on the floor of Roxol. So that's the insulation. And this right here, my countertop, my tabletop, people ask, you know, how, how do you learn how to do epoxy? Well, you're looking at it right now. So this is black walnut. This uh, all comes together into obviously the sink and the stove in there. I'm gonna have my fresh water tank and my gray water tank in the middle luggage bay. This switch right here is the pump. You turn this switch on and then you'll be able, when I do get the faucet in here to run. And then uh, a lot of sentimental pieces that I put in here too, like this door knocker, my mom brought it back from the Netherlands. That's a handle for this cabinet here, but yeah, I was lucky enough to find, you know, lion's heads that are the handles for everything else. Fridge is hidden in there. This is the one that used to be in the van down in California. So I've traveled with this sucker everywhere, as you can see, but now it's in the bus. The appliances that I have here, unique off grid. This fridge, you can run off propane 110 or 12 volts. So I have it plugged in in the back, but actually up top, once I'm on the road, I'll just hit that switch and then it'll be on 12 volt. And the propane bottles you saw downstairs is what runs the stove. But the absolute favorite part, hands down of this entire bus build is this one right here. I could have just got any normal door, but then I ended up getting one slab of cedar, spalted maple burls in there. The door took me about three weeks to make, so it's worth it in the end, but yeah, it takes, takes a long time, that's for sure. And now step into, yeah, the master bedroom. Right now it's a couch, you know what I'm driving around? But actually when I get these Osage beams and I pull these all the way out, this is a queen bed and I made it big enough so if I ever want to put a king mattress on here, I can. The van, I had it where the drawers are actually the support for the bed. But here, I didn't want to have the bed out and then have to constantly put it in and out to get to the clothes that are in here. So this way, you know, the drawers were independent of the supports for the bed. 
all this cedar, I actually had to get the, the back end soaked in water for a couple days. And then, you know, and then bent so I didn't have to cut everything. And then besides that, you know, this is kind of dark. So every board I went with the Tiger Torch and, you know, burnt with the Tiger Torch with that. Then did that because I wanted that darker. This olive, I mean, this has got to be one of my favorite pieces of wood to work with. It just turned out absolutely gorgeous just with the black and light. This tree was actually in a forest fire. So an ember, you know, hit the branch and then burned in. So these are all like little fireballs. There's going to be a mirror up in here, but I do have, again, an indirect light in behind there that can be any color you want. But right here, I'm actually doing like, uh, to keep it pretty modern, like a petrified wood sink. It's going to come up off here. And then of course the faucet and the drain system is going to be running in along this side. And the shower is actually going to be this whole corner here and how it's cut out. So this is going to be the shower. This is the bathroom. This is olive, all done with epoxy. Even the toilet seat's done with epoxy and I burned that with the Tiger Torch. The plumbing for this is what came with the bus. So the black water system, super sanitary, super great. And yeah, like I said, it looks nice. So when you're sitting or doing whatever in there, it's super comfortable. I have a ranch back in Alberta. The old uh, milk barn that was there, I actually took these cedar beams out of there. So filled all this in with, you know, that blue epoxy. And now this is the ladder that goes up top. I got a buddy of mine to weld up brackets every two and a half feet directly into that steel frame. In these brackets, there's these one inch pockets. So actually all on this side and that side, I have railings that you know you just drop right in there. When the railings are up, you have the whole table. Barbecue is gonna be here as well. Basically your penthouse of the bus is really what it is. Money can't buy the feeling that you have living in something that you built yourself, 100%. Yes, you can live a certain lifestyle, but I mean, the appreciation that I have when you put all that time and effort and work, and when I have people in here and I see them thoroughly enjoying themselves, it's like, there is the payoff, you know? That's always what I wanted from this bus. So yeah, it's definitely the appreciation that once you actually sit down, take a breath after years of work, yeah, you, you can't buy that. What this costed was the time. It was the staying up till two in the morning, three in the morning, day in, day out. That's what it costs. What it also costs is approaching these companies, you know, knowing your worth, trying to work something out. That's how you get this done. So I just wouldn't want people to get in the idea where it's like, okay, if I have 10 or $20,000, I can build this. It's like, no, 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 no. Paying for it is easy. The hardest thing, is buying the van or buying the bus. Like pulling the pin and doing it, right? And if you see it's for you, I mean, let's face it, it's, it's so popular now. Say if you don't like it, you can sell the van for what you bought it for, you know what I mean? Buy the van, get a camp stove, throw a mattress in it, you're doing van life. It's really that simple, you know? The features and all the amazing stuff and living, it's the lifestyle, so, you know? And the freedom that comes. I definitely wouldn't be who I am and personality-wise without this, you know? I think that's another reason why I'm kind of happy to you know, do this and share because I mean, so many people message me and like they live vicariously through me or they like that or that kind of thing. But I try and show people, I'm like, if you want to, that's fine, but you don't have to, you know, just, you know, pick up a van and go. It's a big, beautiful world out there. And it's pretty incredible when you get to see it this way, you know? Hey man, how's it going? Can you hear me all right? Hey, yeah, yeah, it's going good. Um, I can hear you. Uh, there's a bit of background noise there. Hey, let me uh, let me try turning on crisp. Does that help at all? Can you hear me any bit better there? Yeah, that is a very noticeable difference. So that is crisp. Crisp is an AI deep tech noise canceling software that it actually works bi-directionally. So if you were in a noisy location on my end, it would clear up your audio as well. And one of the great things about Crisp is if you click the link in the description, it's actually free. So you get 240 minutes per week of free noise canceling. So then you don't have to worry about noise in any of your video calls. At Crisp, they've got a giant research team developing this technology and it works great. I mean, it works for dogs barking. If you've got construction out your window, if people are talking nearby, it will cancel them out. I tried it earlier today while we were cooking using the pressure cooker. So it was whistling and it canceled all of that out and it's free. So if you click the link in the description, you can get 240 minutes per week 
of noise canceling, and then you don't have to worry about noise anymore. So I just wanted to call you and let you know about this great offer, and uh, have a great week, Jackson. Peace. Right on.